Hello everyone. Today we will be learning reactor engineering based on enzyme kinetics. In the basic module, we learned that we have three different ideal reactors, batch-wise operated Stratec reactor BSTR, continuously operated PEC-BED reactor CPBR, and continuously operated Stratec reactor CSTR. We learned that we have different kinds of configurations of these reactors, and we can use free or immobilized enzymes. So today we will move to the part on how to deal with material balances and kinetic equations for the ideal reactors. As a model reactor, we will be working today with BSTR, batchwise operated tank reactor, for our material balances and kinetic equations. So let's remember the characteristics of a BSTR. In the BSTR, we can start the reaction either by the addition of the enzyme or the substrate, or if we are working with cofactor dependent systems, we can add the cofactor to start the reaction, like nicotinamide cofactors. Usually we leave 20 to 30% of the volume for the headspace. At the end of the reaction, after the completion of the reaction, we can inactivate the enzyme by temperature or pH change. And if you are working with immobilized enzymes, we have the possibility to recover and reuse the enzyme so we can run repetitive batch experiments. And this removal of the immobilized enzyme will be possible, for example, with filtration. When we were working with three different ideal reactors in our basic module, we learned all these reactor profiles, once for concentration time and once for concentration location distance. So let's remember also these reactor profiles for BSTR. The figure A is showing us that we are working with unsteady state operation, which means that the substrate concentration is depleting over time and uh, the product concentration is increasing over time. So we have a change in the concentrations over time. Since we are working with an ideal reactor, we have perfect mixing and uh, basically we are working under well-mixed conditions. This is what we see in figure B. That means at the beginning of the reaction, wherever we take the sample, irrespective of the location, we have the maximum substrate concentration. And over the time, the substrate concentration is depleting. And at time x, when we take a sample, irrespective of where we take the sample, because we have well-mixed conditions, we will have the rest substrate concentration and the formed product concentration. This is what we see in figure B. So let's start with the BSTR, our model reactor, ideal reactor, and we will be working in this slide with material balance and kinetic equation. Let's write now the material balance. Input is equal to output plus disappearance of the substrate by the reaction plus accumulation of the substrate. We will be writing based on the flux, so we have the input flux, which is moles over time, is equal to the output flux, again moles over time, plus minus Rs multiplied by the volume, and minus Rs is the reaction rate, which means moles over time per volume, plus the change in the substrate moles over time. So this is the basically accumulation of the substrate. Let's, when we write everything in place. Since we are working with a BSTR, there is no continuous inlet and continuous outlet. That means we can have now here the input and output terms as zero. We continue with the rewriting. We are taking now the minus Rs multiplied by V to the left. And we are leaving then DNS over DT. This is the accumulation of the substrate with the minus term on the right side because we are taking the minus Rs multiplied by V to the left. So here we are using now a mathematical rewriting with the information conversion. Conversion means is the change in the mole of the substrate compared to the initial substrate moles. So this is what we can rewrite here 
for moving further with the material balances. So when we are rewriting now, it means that the time is equal to the NS0, the initial substrate moles. Then we have the integral from the zero conversion, which means the beginning of the reaction, to the conversion that we are working. Then we have in the denominator dxs, so this is the change in the conversion, divided by minus rs multiplied by the volume. So here we are assuming that we are working with the ideal conditions and also we are assuming that we have no expansion, no change in the volume, so that at the end with this ns0 divided by v, so this v, the reaction volume can be taken out of the integral and we have at the end the concentration term which is moles over volume. So this is what we see here, t is equal to the concentration and we have the integral from zero from the beginning of the reaction to the xs the, the conversion to the conversion that we are interested in then we have the dxs divided by minus rs so another rewriting would be that we can either use this zero to xs in the integral as the limits but we can also have the initial substrate concentration to the concentration of the substrate to the point that we are interested in. So in this step, we will be working further with the yellow equation that we derived, that we have in our hand from the material balances. We learned that we can write the equation either in terms of the conversion or concentration. This minus Rs is the reaction rate the change in the concentration over time. And since we are working with enzyme catalysis, we will be writing minus Rs, and as an example of the units, millimole per liter per minute is equal to the enzyme concentration, milligram per milliliter, multiplied by V, micromole per minute, multiplied by milligram in denominator. And this V that we have here, is coming from the michaelis melton equation, V is equal to the V max multiplied by Cs divided by Km plus Cs. So this is the equation that we worked with in our basic module for single substrate kinetics, no inhibition and irreversible reaction. From this point on, we will be rewriting this yellow highlighted equation. And now time is equal to the minus, and we are using the concentrations in the limits of the integral Cs0 to Cs to the point of the concentration of the substrate, dCs divided by the enzyme concentration multiplied by the V. So we are now rewriting minus Rs. And the V in our case will be, since we are working with enzyme catalysis, will be the Vmax multiplied by the Cs divided by Km plus Cs. So, ideality would also mean that the active enzyme concentration would be staying the same, so there is no inactivation. That means we can take the ME, this is the enzyme concentration outside of the integral. The same is true for the Vmax, because Vmax is a michaelis menten kinetics parameter, and it will be staying the same. And that's why we can also take the Vmax out, because it's a constant value. Then we are writing or continuing to work with this integral CS0, CS, DCS divided by, then we have the rest terms coming from the michaelis melton kinetics, CS divided by Km plus CS in the denominator. The rest is purely mathematical rewriting, and that's why we have at the end this equation T is equal to this, the reaction time is equal to the minus 1 divided by enzyme concentration multiplied by the Vmax. We have the integral from Cs0, the starting concentration of the substrate, to the Cs at time x. In parenthesis, Km multiplied by dCs divided by Cs plus dCs. We will be working with the equation that we have in our hands that we received from material balance and Michaelis-Melton kinetic equation. 
So the reaction time on the left side and on the right side, we have the equation that we got. And again, to highlight, we can write this equation either in terms of substrate concentration or conversion. And this is exactly what we have here. R1.1, in this equation, we have substrate concentration. In R1.2, we have conversion. So R1.1, the reaction time multiplied by enzyme concentration multiplied by Vmax is equal to Km multiplied by Ln Cs0 divided by Cs plus Cs0 minus Cs. R1.2, in this case we are using conversion. Reaction time multiplied by enzyme concentration multiplied by Vmax is equal to minus Km multiplied by Ln 1 minus Xs plus Cs0 multiplied by Xs, the conversion at time x. So both of these equations can help us to calculate the enzyme amount that we need to get a target substrate conversion if we are using R1.2 or a fixed amount of the substrate at time x, then it will be R1.1 in a fixed operation time. So these equations at the end is helping us to assess and to compare in different reactors what will be the enzyme amount, enzyme concentration that we need to reach the same substrate conversion. So let's remember now what we learned in our basic module about michaelis menten kinetics. Here we have the michaelis menten graphic representation. On the y-axis we have the activity, we have the units per milligram, and on the x-axis we have the substrate concentration. We have three different regions in the michaelis menten graphic representation. First order kinetics region at the beginning, while the reaction rate is linearly depending on the substrate concentration. In the middle, we have the michaelis menten kinetics region. And at the end, where we are approaching to the Vmax value, we have zero order kinetics region. So while we worked now in our lecture today with the michaelis menten equation, we assumed that we are working with single substrate kinetics, no inhibition and irreversible reaction. And with this, we achieve this R1.1 and R1.2. R1.2 is the equation in which we have the conversion of the substrate. So again, time, the reaction time, multiplied by enzyme concentration, multiplied by Vmax, is equal to the initial substrate concentration, multiplied by the conversion of the substrate, minus Km, multiplied by Ln, in parenthesis, 1 minus Xs, the conversion of the substrate. So, as I mentioned, we assumed that we have no inhibition. We are working with single substrate kinetics and irreversible reaction. At the end, if we would like to have the versions of this R1.1 and R1.2, we would have different possibilities based on if we have inhibition or not. And also at the same time, it's important to know in which kinetics order region that we are working. What we see here on the left side, that if we have an inhibition, we have to know if this inhibition is strong or weak. And we have the comparison of the Ki over Km value. If this value is less than one, we have strong inhibition. And if this ratio Ki over Km value is more than one, we have weak inhibition. In terms of kinetics order region, if we are working at substrate concentrations much less than the Km, then we are in the first order kinetics region. If we are working with the substrate concentrations much higher than the Km, so this is the region where we have the V value close to the Vmax, then we are working with zero order kinetics region. So these are the orientations we will have or deviations that we, we will have from the R1.1 and R1.2 that we just received for BSTR as a model ideal reactor system today. 
With this, we reach now to the end of our lecture today. I would like to thank you, European Commission, for the Interfaces project and you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you.